Hey there, science fans. You know, our bodies are like amazing machines, even when we're sleeping. We're not just snoozing, we're on a fascinating sleep schedule. This schedule is controlled by something called circadian rhythms, our natural 24-hour cycle. It tells us when to wake up, when to eat, and most importantly, when to sleep. But here's the thing, it's not just one long snooze fest. Inside this 24-hour rhythm, our sleep is broken down into cycles, kind of like mini-episodes in a TV series. These are called ultradian rhythms, and each cycle lasts about 90 minutes. Each episode stars different sleep stages, from light dozing to deep sleep, and finally, the grand finale, REM sleep, where most of our vivid dreams appear. Scientists wondered, what's happening in our brains during these different stages? What's so special about REM sleep? That's where two sleep detectives, William Dement and Nathaniel Kleitman, entered the scene with their groundbreaking 1957 study. Dement and Kleitman weren't satisfied with just knowing we sleep. They wanted to unlock the secrets of our dreams. They were particularly curious about a strange connection they observed, rapid eye movements, or REM, during sleep. They had a hunch. Could these eye movements be linked to the bizarre worlds we experience in our dreams? So, they designed a study with three main questions in mind. First, do we dream more during REM sleep compared to other stages? Second, does the length of our REM sleep match how long we think we've been dreaming? And finally, do our eye movements during REM actually relate to what's happening in our dreams? They were ready to dive deep into the mysteries of the sleeping mind. To answer their questions, Dement and Kleitman needed some brave volunteers willing to be observed while they slept. They ended up with a small but dedicated group of seven men and two women. Now, this wasn't a random selection like picking names out of a hat. They used what we call opportunity sampling, which means they chose people who were readily available and willing to participate. Think about it like this. Imagine you're in the school science club and your teacher needs volunteers for an experiment. You and your clubmates are right there, eager to learn, so you'd be perfect candidates. That's kind of how Dement and Kleitman found their sleep study stars. Now let's imagine you're one of Dement and Kleitman's volunteers. You walk into the sleep lab a bit nervous, but mostly excited. You see a comfy bed waiting for you, but it has some unusual wires attached to it. These are connected to a machine called an EEG, which will track your brainwaves as you sleep. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt a bit. You settle in, and the researchers gently stick small electrodes near your eyes. These will record your eye movements throughout the night. As you drift off to sleep, you know you're part of something important, helping scientists unlock the secrets of the dreaming world. The study uses a repeated measures design, meaning you'll be observed across multiple nights. Each night you'll be woken up several times, especially during REM sleep, and asked about your dreams. The researchers will then compare your dream reports with your brain activity and eye movements recorded during these periods. The independent variable in this study is the sleep stage you're in, REM or non-REM, which the researchers control by waking you up at specific times. The dependent variables are your answers about your dreams. This includes whether you were dreaming, what your dream was about, and how long you felt you were dreaming. This clever design allows the researchers to connect the dots between what's happening in your brain, how your eyes are moving, and the amazing stories your mind creates while you sleep. Let's wrap up by looking at what Dement and Kleitman actually discovered. First, they found that dream recall was much higher during REM sleep. Participants remembered dreams 79.6% of the time in REM, but almost never in non-REM sleep, with 93.1% not recalling dreams at all. Second, when asked to estimate how long they had been dreaming, participants were impressively accurate 88% got it right for 5 minutes and 79% for 15 minutes, showing a strong link between REM duration and our sense of dream time. Third, the researchers noticed that eye movement patterns during REM often matched the content of dreams, like eyes moving up and down when dreaming about climbing. However, this was based on the researchers' interpretations of the dream reports, so it's a bit subjective 
Overall, Dement and Kleitman concluded that dreaming and vivid experiences are closely tied to REM sleep, not non-REM. Their study opened the door to understanding the mysterious world of dreams and how our brains work while we sleep.